Welcome to the School of Rock Bottom podcast with Oliver Mason. I'm an actor, a voiceover artist, a performing arts school principal, and a mental health coach. And it's these careers combined that have given birth to this podcast. Those working across the creative industries are three times more likely to have a mental health problem. And those working in performing arts are twice as likely to have depression and up to 15 times more likely to have an anxiety disorder. So on this podcast, I invite really incredible creatives who have lived through a rock bottom and have survived. This is a podcast of hope and how to get out. And I'm really excited today because I've got the brilliant Kai Owen in the studio. This is epic. Thanks no, so much for coming down. My pleasure, mate. My pleasure. Before we get into it, I'm just going to give uh, a bit of a bio here for you. Okay. Uh, so if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, do forgive me as I look down on my notes. I don't have an auto cue. So Kai was born in Clan Roost. Did I get that right? Not bad at all. Fair play. Kai was born in Clan Roost. Yeah. That was even better, <laughs> uh, which is in North Wales. And he trained at the Mount View Academy. In a career spanning over two decades, working in musicals to classic Shakespeare to Alan Akebourne, Kai has toured and appeared at various major UK theatres and the West End. He is an associate artist of Theatre Cluid. Kai is a popular and familiar face on British television, appearing in numerous shows on major UK television channels, including Waterloo Road, Doctors, Casualty, Fun at the Funeral Parlour, The Syndicate, Rocket Man, Doc Martin, being Human, The Accident, and soon to be seen in Wolf, which is coming, I think, this year. This year, mate. Yeah, oh, amazing. Year. Uh, Kai is best known for his roles in the hugely popular UK continuing drama series Hollyoaks, playing the role of Pete Buchanan. And to a worldwide audience since 2006, Kai has played Reese Williams, husband of Gwen Cooper, in the smash hit series Torchwood. Thanks ever so much for coming Mate, no today. problem. I've got an intro. Cheers, man. Oh, no. And, <laughs> and you know what? That's a very he heavily edited bio, I must say, because I know you've, you know, you've done so much work. I've been very lucky, mate. I've been very lucky. Yeah, it's been, um, it's been a blast, actually. Yes, I left in 1998. I graduated, so it's been uh, ups and downs, but, you know, it's been, uh, I've been very lucky. Yeah, well, I think I'm luckier today, haven't you, here? Oh, I, know, I know you've had to travel to London to, to come and do <laughs> yes, this. Yes, I'm in London today. Um, I hope you don't mind, Kai, but... I love to just kind of get straight in there. Yeah. If that's all right. Yeah. Obviously, this podcast is called School of Rock Bottom. Mm -hmm. um, I wondered if we could start with your rock bottom moment. Yeah. Like, I know for a lot a lot of people that come on this podcast, there's not just one. Yeah. But if you could just pick one. Yeah. And um, try and take the listeners and the viewers to that moment as best you can, if that's yeah. all right. And we'll pan out from there. Okay, buddy. Okay. Um, I... Yes, um, you know, it would have to be probably August the 21st, 2017, where I was on, I would get, I would guess, yeah, I, I, it, it was, I was on my last legs. I was at the, it was my rock bottom because I have, I have built up from then. And I think it was the day that I realized that if I continued what I was doing with my behavior and my choices, I would lose everything dear to me and probably also my life if I continued. Um, with some support from friends and gentle sort of, you know, guidance, they were, they were telling me, be careful what you're doing. This is a slippery slope. And the slope was rapidly decreasing from, you know, for, for a good few years up until definitely August the 21st, 2017, where I was wandering the streets in North London, you know, um, pissed out of my brains, crying on the streets, on the phone to my wife and just, just lost and, and knowing that I needed to get out of this otherwise there was only one outcome i had a son it, 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 it a house in north london a marriage and everything was hanging on the knife edge and i think if i hadn't have picked up a phone or texted someone that day who i knew could help i don't know if i'd be here talking to you today wow and i did and i spoke to this person who i still speak to now daily um, thank God. Um, 
I spoke to him and I was pissed, you know, and he just sort of nudged me and said, look, do this, do this. And I just, and, 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 and then the next morning I just did what he recommended and almost six years later, I'm here talking to you. Wow. In, in that, in that sort of, and that, you know, and I think there was a few rock bottoms before that, like you mentioned, mm. but that day specifically in my mind, I think, mate, it just, just, I, I you know, I can't remember it clearly because sadly, you know, I was, I wasn't really of, of sane mind at the time, but, but it, but it was just, it was that, it, it was the culmination of those few days leading up to the sort leading up to the, uh, 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 the 21st of August, I think that that I knew I don't, you know, warnings, advice from friends, everything. And it just led to that moment. And there was, you know, there was rock bottoms all the way through, but it was that, well, that's my last, that, that was the, the last rock bottom. And and I will say it was probably the most significant rock bottom because since then I have slowly been t- one day at a time trying to do better. Yeah. Thanks ever so much for sharing that, Kai. Uh, really, really appreciate that. You, you mentioned a word, um, that you were making the wrong choices yeah, and, and that yeah. things were snowballing. Yeah. Um, for someone listening or watching this who doesn't understand, you said the word piss, so I'm assuming it's around alcohol. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, sorry. It's a yeah, drunk, sorry. Yeah, it was, yeah. you know, and that's the sort of word I would use because I was literally, I mean, I, I hate saying it, but actually it's, it's, a, it's a word that I, that I grew up with in, in, yeah, in yeah. Wales. I was a piss head and, and that's, that's the word, you know, it's, it's quite a brutal word and it's quite crude and raw, but I was a huge pisshead and, yeah. and that's, and that just was, you know, and, 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 and yeah. And so I think I, I was, I was drunk. I was, I was, I was, there was other, there was other things in my system at the time as well, but predominantly it was alcohol. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I'd found other things at the time with alcohol, but, um, I, it was, it was mainly alcohol induced, um, yeah, hysteria. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So in terms of the choices you were making, I think somebody, who doesn't understand maybe yeah. alcohol use disorder or alcoholism, yeah. whatever yeah. kind of word that you would choose. Um, sometimes that's the bit that they don't understand. Yeah. Is why were why were you making those choices? Yeah. And and I just wondered, you know, obviously now you're six years down the track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you been able to pinpoint why those choices were made under the influence of alcohol? I think I mean I don't I I was trying to have a little think today before coming to talk to you. And I don't really like do I've done a couple of podcasts, but I don't and I've done and I've shared my story a few times, but mm. I don't like to sort of pre-plan. So I didn't really dwell too yeah. much on it. Yeah. But one thing that I was thinking about on the train today was I never spoke. I never talked to anybody. Yeah. I suffered in silence right. all my life, really, I think, since yeah. a very young child. And I think it was dealing with my own, dealing with all my own problems myself, whether 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 it was ego or, or I, I don't quite know, but it was it, it, it was a not talking. I think that's mm. that's a thing that I can pinpoint. I think that springs to mind now. Going now, I talk. Now I'm honest. Now I don't run away. Now I don't bury my head in the sand. While before, mm. that's all I ever bloody did. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I think if I wanted to pinpoint something, it was that. And then and then that just, and because there's no doubt about it, I had a mental health problem and an anxiety problem for a very, from a very young age because I was right. a constant worrier. Mm. But I would worry on my own right. in isolation. I would never tell anybody if I had something on my mind. I would never share anything. I would try and deal with it myself yeah. in my own room, in my own isolation kind of thing. Mm. And if the anxiety got a bit too much, you know, I would self-medicate with booze to sort of, you know, to ease the anxiety. But then as we know, it then booze would heighten the anxiety. Yeah. So it was that sort of vicious circle. And it was, it was, it was probably the not talking, I think, is a is a big thing that pinpointed. Mm. And not um not sharing, not asking for help. I don't know, not, not even asking for help. Just just sort of having a, having a mask on all the time making right. thinking that everything's all right everything's okay everything's okay and sure. running away from money problems and issues with people and not wanting to upset people and constantly treading on eggshells and it just escalates into a huge huge thing i think yeah and and i think it's that and you know scared to say no um scared to upset people um lying really really you no know, not being honest right um with myself or others um 
and then that causing my own that causing anxiety for someone who already suffered from anxiety mm. you know so you know yeah i was sort of i was my own worst enemy gotcha um, and was some of that uh, i mean i know um I, th I think i'm believing right in saying that your dad works for the unions yeah Is that right? yeah he did yeah 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 or, he did, or he, or he did. He's retired yeah he retired now. now yeah yeah um wh when i was looking a little bit into your background uh and please correct me if i'm wrong i'm sort of imagining quite a quite quite a stoic upbringing yeah uh, absolutely uh, and yeah. quite um in some ways a bit like my own yeah um was there a sort of a an alpha male presence growing up? I, I've got no idea. Yeah, cool. I'm an I'm an only child actually, right. and I was, and it is it, it. I was surrounded by a lot of alpha males um, in in San Roost, and um, I had a fantastic childhood, and and it was just idyllic. You know, when you when you know the setting and where you know, I, where, where, if you know where I come from, it's like it's right in the heart of Snowdonia. It's like wow. it's. It's literally God's country. It's, you know, and um, I'm very proud to come from there. But everybody was very working class, worked their worked their socks off, you know, every day. Everybody was working. My mom had three jobs, you know, a cleaner. Every job every job that she had was a cleaner. She had like three cleaning jobs every day, worked hard. My dad worked in a factory, in an aluminium factory for years, and then um, became a shop steward and then got into, got involved in with the GMB union and fell into that very much, you know, people person show um, mm. for that man of the people. So it was, it was work hard and, and head down and, 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 and graft away. And most of my family were all, were all grafters and they, they all still are, but I was, I was just a bit different to them because I wanted to, I wanted to perform in musicals and be on stage. And, right. and um, I felt, there was a different sort of path calling me. And actually, if it wasn't, you know, I, I may not have got there if it wasn't for the guidance of a probably good teachers, but I think there was that sort of alpha sort of surrounding me that right. sort of like said, oh, forget about it, you'll be okay. Even if, if I tried to sort of maybe say, oh, I'm a little bit worried about this, mm. it was kind of shut down very quickly. Yeah, yeah. To go, oh, don't worry about it, you'll be fine. Crack on, bloody hell, come on. Yeah. You know, you know and so it was that, and I think that was prevalent in my life from a very young age mm -hmm. hence me dealing with my own crap in my own head as an only child in my room uh pretty much all my life right does right. that make sense it does yeah make, it yeah. makes absolute sense and, and i can relate to, to yeah, quite yeah, a bit to yeah. what you're talking about in the sense that you know my default always was particularly when when i was younger was yeah. you know how are you doing and it doesn't matter what's going on i'm <laughs> like yeah i'm all right mate. absolutely you're right. fine mate. Yeah, mate yeah you're right yeah, and yeah, and yeah. But like you say, I think, you know, I was quite different to um, a lot of people around me growing up as well. Like I wanted to perform, uh, maybe, yeah. not, maybe not musicals, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but you know, I always, always wanted to be on stage or in yeah. front of a camera. And then I was aware there was a, an added layer of sensitivity to me and, yeah. and a kind, yeah. of a, yeah. kind of an overthinking. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Th I think that, oh, the <laughs> overthinking massively, mate. I mean, massively. I, I think this, and, and the sensitivity, yeah, I, I wished... I sometimes wished I was, when I was a kid, I wished I was harder. Mm. I wished I was tougher when I was a kid. Right. I don't now. I'm glad, mm. I'm glad I'm vulnerable and mm. sensitive and, you know, can feel every emotion going. Yeah. Whilst I think growing up, I wished I was harder because there was a lot of tough boys around me, tough yeah. people, tough women around me, actually. My mum's right. hard as nails. So you sort of just go into a default of yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And at what point in that journey then did you discover alcohol kind of helped you deal with that what kind of age did that start i, I think that alcohol had been alcohol was there right from the age of sort of 15 16 really right through i could i, I just I, it, the, the town that i come from is a is a is a drinking town there's yeah. you know there's eight or nine pubs in a very small in a very small vicinity and i think um i, I was always surrounded by it the 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 people would finish work on a friday afternoon and be in the pub at five o'clock and drink all weekend. It was the done thing. Right. There wasn't ever a thought in my head, and I've mentioned this a few times uh, over the past few years, that actually it was the done thing. There was never not an option not to drink. It was like, you turn 18, you go out drinking on a weekend. Yeah. yeah. It was that, that, that's the natural sort of, so, you know, 16, you can leave school, 17, you drive, 18, you go to the pubs. It, that, that was the, that's how I thought growing up was really. Mm -hmm. I never thought there was now an option of like, well, you don't have to do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I think, and I think, Everybody had a normal job. My mates still, some of my mates are still doing the same job at, at, that, 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 that they were doing when I was at home. And I think it was that thing of you'd go to the pub at, at, at six o'clock on a Friday night and you'd spend the weekend there. Mm. And then you'd wake up on Monday and do the same 
same routine kind of thing. And 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 I could always I was always around booze and I would always drink. I could just yeah. always it was there. There was cans in the house. I, I remember having cans, at, you know, in an early age, and just drinking, and and then actually not being a normal drinker. Then you know, from a very young age, realizing, oh, I I I'm not very good at this. Right. I could drink, you know, yeah. and but like I would get proper pissed, you know, right from a very young age all the time. And actually, in a way of going, you know, you could say I was a bit, you know, was I a lightweight? No, I would just get pissed all the time. Right. You know, and in that way, and it's not like a lightweight drinker, like, but I would literally drink loads and get and get and get smashed, you know, really loads. And when I, and then when I finally when I came to, and so I was drink was around me all the time. I was, mm. it was something that I could do. And um, every weekend was I was heavily involved. I worked behind the bar in pubs, constant pints, constant cans, probably drink every day. Really, you know, right. it was always a big part of my life on football weekends, rugby weekends you'd go out and get smashed, you know, yeah, not just yeah. one or two. And that was from, a, that was from the, from, a, from the very first time I remember started drinking. Right. Well, that, you know, that, that, yeah. that was it. It was that, that routine really. Yeah. And then when I finally left North Wales to come to London and being really nervous about it um, and, and, you know, coming to London for the first time and um, meeting different people, one thing I was certain I was good at was mm. I could go out with them. And, right. and I could drink with them, right. um, and 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 hide behind some drinks. So I would just, I would just, yeah, it was. I could just drink from a very early age. And when you went, early age, but you know, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Not when, that early, but <laughs> yeah. I, and you went to Mountview, didn't you? Yeah. And I think you graduated around ninety eight, ninety nine, ninety eight. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, that's a very prestigious drama school, yeah, yeah. and. I know it's, uh, you know, a lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, did it impact your time at drama school? No, it didn't actually. Right. It, it didn't. I, whether it, it kind of, I loved every second at Mountain View. I actually loved every second of it. And I think it certainly affected me because, because, because hangovers and et cetera would always have affected me all my life and the anxiety of that. But it, it didn't really affect my training. Because I, I, mm -hmm. I, I grasped every single day at Mountain View and I just, and I loved it because I, because I, th I think what it was, I think, I think we were young, we were full of energy. We could go out every night. I couldn't afford to go out and get too sort of, you know, uh, um, heavy every night, but it was certainly a big part of our college life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of course it was. And I would definitely, I remember the first night, we remember it now. I remember the first night at Mountain View going to the pub with a, still a good mate of mine who was there and I drank 17 pints of calories on that first night. Wow. So, I was about to say that was impressive. Maybe it, maybe it wasn't impressive. It sounds impressive so to me. I, I, I certainly, and that's not even like going, oh my God, mm. you don't seven in it. And I'm going, I don't know how I did that. I don't mm. know how I did that. And like, and, and you know, I, I would fall over. I would do, I would, it, it, so it would, you know, I, I could drink. You know what I mean? As could everybody else. There's, there's, people, people were socializing. Of course they were. Mm. But there was, there was an, always an underlying element to me of going, I need it to sort of face the crowd sort of thing, you know, be to sort of hide anxiety and sort of people please. But then I would suffer the darkness the next day. Right. And that's, that's where, the, and that is the thing that, that all my life haunted me with it really right. is that darkness. And then mm. the only cure to, for that darkness for me to what, you know, as I, as it went further on was to, was to probably have another pint. Another drink. Yeah. When did, when did that bit of the jigsaw come in? Because it sounds the way you describe that period at drama school um, that you were kind of doing what everyone else was doing. Yeah, you were just yeah, going out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You were aware that you were drinking a little bit more and that there was yeah. sort of a, you go into a, I guess, like some kind of depression yeah. the next day. I was li I literally mentioned the other day going, I just wish yeah. I, I, I'd go out the night before ever and then my mates would be up. And I'm like, let's go out, let's go, let's go and get something else. And But I just could not, mm. I would get up. But but the anxiety, the crippling fear inside me right. to sort of face the next day with a hangover um, was just awful. I was hugely envious of people who were going, I don't get, I don't get hangovers. Yeah, right. But like, and people, I don't, I don't, I don't get them at all. I, I was hugely envious of mates going, they would be, literally be up and they could eat a breakfast and go out. Well, I like, mm. I couldn't face anything. I had such an anxiety, a knot in my stomach. I hadn't done anything bad other than just probably you know, get, getting pissed, mm, but mm. it was so the, 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 the anxiety and the, the fear was mm. so massive right there from, from the very first day that I sort of drunk really. Right. Uh, um, that, that was a huge, that, 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 that sort of was always there. 
And then as I got a bit, as I got after college, I realised that actually, ooh, a couple of pints actually, the old classic hair of the dog yeah. did work yeah. for me. Yeah. But I wouldn't have one hair of the dog. It would be another, it would just spiral into the all day Saturday and Sunday. Do you know what I mean? It was that yeah. sort of feeling. Like, so that was where it started, I think. You know what I mean? That that fear of that darkness of a hangover. Yeah, absolutely. And and in terms of, I mean, obviously when you were at Mountview, you have to be incredibly focused. You're yeah. literally at yeah. training. Yeah. Was there any correlation to your drinking patterns after that with periods of being in work and out and out of work? W- w- was there any kind of symmetry there or, or was it just random? Um, when I, when I, when I left Mountview and then when, when, you know, when we first got, when I first got my first couple of jobs, they were hugely social jobs. Yeah. Massively social jobs. Probably, probably the worst kind of jobs I could have got into really. Like. Um, one, especially the first one wasn't too bad. It was like, it was a, my first job was at Stafford Castle doing, doing an open air Shakespeare, which cool. was fabulous. And yeah. And, and and a brilliant time. And we had fun. There's no doubt about it. We had fun. And yes, I would get pissed. Of course I would. But my second job after that, which probably lasted <laughs> almost 10 years, was was Theatre Cluid. Right. Right. Where <laughs> it's it's amazing, really, because uh, um, when I started on that first job and it was a massive piss up. Though. Right. It was one of the, some of the best jobs I've ever done in my life with the best directors, some of the best theatres. I made mates for life on that job. Met my best mate working at Theatre Cluid. Um, but fucking hell, we, we, we partied hard. Right, right, right. Partied hard. And I mean, maybe we'll come to it eventually, but I, I, I think I spoke to you, I think I mentioned at the very beginning, I texted somebody on August mm. the 21st. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That person was there at Theatre Cluid with me. Oh, wow. And, you know, he, um, they've they've been on an, an amazing journey. Um, so there was a lot of people at that time in Theatre Cluid who mm. who now help me because they've shown me a way. Got it. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it, with something like alcohol and I guess other substances as well would, would be the same, that, you know, the thing that becomes a poison at yeah. one point was actually the whole thing that kind of, you know, brought everybody together. And, and, yeah. and it sounds like you were aware of this kind of paradox thing of I'm having a good time, but aware of some consequences even 100%. at the same time. Yeah, and I... Th- and I and I think really and truly what, what it came down to and what it, what it boils down to, I think, over the years, over the past few years especially, is that my mental health was never good. Right. And, if you, and I think, from my point of view, like, if you have mental health, mental health issues and anxiety issues, which, which I've only been diagnosed, you know, recently, you know, the past few years, mm. you shouldn't really drink. Yeah, absolutely. So... Mm. You know, that's that's where the dangerous mix was. Yeah. Some people could handle it. I couldn't. Mm. And I think because I, I I suffer from anxiety and my mental health wasn't, isn't great, wasn't, isn't great. Mm. So hand in hand, they don't go well together. Yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 it's not a good marriage. Mm. Um, so I was only feeding it. I was feeding the anxiety and feeding the depression and feeding the dark thoughts that would have been there anyway. Mm. So it was just heightening it really. And that bit that you've just described, with, which I 100% agree yeah. with, isn't really publicised that much, is it? No, no, you know, I, not at all. <laughs> if if any if if somebody you know this is just in layman's terms, somebody says to me, look, I really suffer from anxiety. I've got really bad mental health issues. I'd go, try, I would literally go, do you drink? And say, yeah. I said, just just see how it is if you stop drinking for a bit. Yeah, you know, absolutely. and that, and it, it would. It, and, and and it doesn't cure it at all, mm. but it'd be surprised. It'd be I think you'd be surprised. It it, it doesn't it doesn't do it any good, does it? It no. doesn't do it any good at no. all. You're no. watering the weeds constantly with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. You literally. Um, yeah, it doesn't say on a, so, on, a, on a can of beer in ten years' time this might cause panic disorder. Yeah, yeah. Or in no, one year's time it's it might just cause not, panic it's disorder. Just, it, it, they just don't go well together. I mm. think, and I think, um, and especially if you. And I think I, I've, I've had severe sort of anxiety and, and you know, I've, I've, I've had medication for, for my mental health and depression and, 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 and you know, I, and the amount I was drinking mm. definitely shouldn't, shouldn't have done that. You know what I mean? Definitely yeah. shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and I would assume as well, medication, you know, on top of drinking probably wouldn't work anyway, no, exa- right? No, exactly. Yeah. I yeah. was, you know, I'd, I'd been to the doctors a few times, you know, you know, I'm really unhappy. I'm, I'm this is awful. I, 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 you know, I, I, I'd done some bad things. I'd, I'd made some bad decisions when I was, you know, when I was pissed and got myself in debt, got myself, you know, you know, with, with everything and life, life decisions and things. And and I think 
So then, I, then I'd be worried and full of anxiety about it. So I'd go to the doctor mm. and talk about it, and he put me on a course of, you know, the, the usual antidepressants sort of thing, and all that sorted. But actually, that's not even the root of the problem. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, I was just drinking them. Yeah, and like going, oh, I feel better now. I've had a couple of these. <laughs> not, not at all. Yeah, you know, not at all. Still not talking, by the way. Still mm. trying to isolate. Still not sharing everything. Still putting on a mask. Yeah, yeah I'm fine all the way through. You know, all the way through. I've, and you know, or, or, or telling a few people, I've been to the doctors. I've got a bit of an anxiety issue, a bit down and all. I'm going through a hard time, so he's put me on some antidepressants. Um, and then uh, <laughs> just cracking on with, you know, going, oh, I'm fine now, but mm. really not again. You know, not not. Still not addressing the, the the root cause, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it sounds like drinking at the beginning was a very sort of sociable thing, like yeah. like you say, sort of out and about. And then and then you describe at the beginning that bit of you walking around in North London, yeah, you know, drunk. Um, d did it become quite a kind of um, in isolation activity? Yeah, drinking? Oh, massively. So. Right, I would. It would become. It it was a huge. It was literally a huge. If, if you saw a graph, if you, if you drew a graph from pretty much the age of eighteen, it just it, it just went constantly on the increase, on the incline, right, all the way through. And it, I think it was just, and especially the last couple of years, you know, before before I got sober, really was was just, um, yeah, it, I was drinking at every opportunity, at right. every single opportunity. Like, yeah. Yes, I couldn't wait for a train journey. Mm. I couldn't wait to get you know, you know, six cans of Stella and a bottle of wine for mm. a two hour train journey. By the yeah. way. Yeah. You know, and that wouldn't be a problem. They wouldn't touch the sides. Right. And like, oh, oh, I've got a weekend away. Amazing. I'd plan, I'd, I'd, I'd plan my hangovers even by, by getting stuff, by, by getting things like Resolve and alka in because I'd know what I'd be like on the Monday so morning. Right. But, but, but yeah, and, and, it, and it became, and then I was hiding it. You know, I'd literally only, only released my mates going, you know, said, you never used to drink in the morning, did you? And I went, yeah, I did, mate. I really did, but like you, you just wouldn't know about it. And I was, mm. and it got to, it got to, it, it was getting, it was getting worse and worse. It was, it was a progressive illness towards the end. Sure. And, and, you know, I, I think someone listening to this would be quite interested to know how long it took you to go to that drink in the morning, which you just yeah. really generously shared. So yeah. thank you for that. Um, was it something that you did quite early on or was it something that kind of just crept in over? It definitely crept in over, 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 over a period of time. Um, mm. it, 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 it was interesting really. It was like, I think we mentioned it. I didn't realize how much the hair of the dog worked and helped mm. sort of thing. And I think, I hate calling it that really, but it was that I was doing that more and more often, yeah. especially the last couple of years, especially the last 12 months of, of... Well, I believe it's it's a Hungarian term, the hair of the dog that bit you. There believe, you go, 100%. You know, which kind of go. just sums up exactly yeah. what you're describing. It was that thing of like, you know, alcohol sort of, um, you know, calms, young, you know, alcohol calms anxiety, then it heightens it as well sort of thing. So I'd mm. have an awful anxiety feeling. I'd have a few glasses of wine and it would go away. And then the next day, which would be heightened by it. So it was that horrible, yeah. vicious circle that actually it did. It did bite me in the ass because going, if I hadn't have had that drink, I wouldn't have mm. felt that bad. And I think it, it is that sort of feeling, if that makes sense, mate. You know mm. what I mean? It's that. And I think it Total was it, it, it was that thing of just, yeah. And uh, I must say this. I, I, I would... I would only drink in the morning if I could drink in the morning. Mm, mm. Um, it, and I, I was always of sound mind of that. If I had to go on set or anything like that, I was always, I was, I was, I was, or I may have been hung over. Yeah. But yeah. Then I didn't, I, you know, and I, and I can honestly say that, that I didn't before going into the work or doing right. it. I may have had a glass of wine in an interval when I've done a, done a theatre show. Yeah. And maybe a couple more sort of thing, more than, more than a couple. But the morning drinking would only happen when I knew I could. And when I knew I could, uh, I I bloody did, and that's probably when the wheels really started yeah, to come we, off. Yeah, so yeah. it was, and then it, then I was looking for any time to drink then, and looking for things like that, and 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 you know, and sadly it was it, on weekends I'd, I'd be working away and. I would come home and be with my son for the weekend, kind of thing, and he was only probably about six or seven at the time. And but he go, oh, let's let's take him out, for, let's take him out for you know, for example, I'd go, Let, let's go to London Zoo for the day, you know, and we would, you know, and would be me and him going to London Zoo. But by the time we got to London Zoo, I'd taken him into about four pubs, right? And that's mm -hmm. that, and and again, that's you know, not proud of that at all. Oh, I just need a wee. Let's just go and have a quick wee and all. Like, I'll get you a bag of crisps. Yeah. You know, and I'll play, have a quick game of pool if you want, boy, you know. And I'd and I'd do that. Yeah. And so by the time I got to London, and then, and, and then, you know, I'd have a, if we'd walk around London, this is just an example, but I, this did happen, you know, and we'd walk around London Zoo and we'd have a burger sort of thing. And I'd, mm. oh, let's not go to that cafe. They don't serve 
Camden Hell's Light, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> let's go to that one. So then we'd have a burger and chips there, and I'd have a. You know, it was that. It was. It was mm. becoming. I was manufacturing ways to sort of to drink all the way through, and then I think people. That, then it was. Then it was getting worse and worse. Wasn't it? You know, that's 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 what it was, and um, spending money on drink that I didn't have, and mm. getting myself into all sorts of issues. So yeah, yeah, and you spoke about at the beginning about making bad choices. Um, and you also shared that you've been sober, I think six years, right? Yeah. Six years, yeah. yeah. Right? Come in, in six years. Yeah. Now I would assume, uh, I've known you a few years now yeah. and every choice you've always made around me has always been bang on. <laughs> so, I, so I'm now going to make the assumption that you've been making brilliant choices in the last six years. I yeah. mean, I know none of us are perfect. No. Yeah. Um, Again, someone listening to this who doesn't understand yeah. uh, alcohol use disorder or alcoholism, yeah. whatever term you want to use, um, might just conclude, well, you know, you're making good choices now because you're now not drinking. Yeah. Is it as simple as that? No, it isn't as simple as that, I don't think. And I think, yes, but believe you me, I'm still making bad because we're human. Sure. We are absolutely human. What it, what it, what being sober and does allow me to do is to face my problems with honesty and truth. Mm. And that's where, that's the difference. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm still, I'm rubbish with money, mate. I'm rubbish. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still crap with, you know, making decisions and, and, you know, and probably go, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Still lose my temper. Still shout. I'm still an idiot. Of course. But I address them. Mm. If I have to apologize, I'm more than happy to do that. I, I, I will own up to my mistakes, resentments, everything. You know, right. I face them now. Right. While before... I would bury my head in the sand right. and hide away from them and pray that they would go away, that Mr. Stella and Mr. Mrs. Pinot Grigio or, or whatever, and you know, whatever it would, would just, they would, it, it would, they, they would just, they would cure all the ills Got it. and it doesn't, it mm. just, the answer is not in that bottle. It's not there. And I would look for, you know, oh, yo, go, go and see your mate Jack Daniels and all that. It, it, it just, it's not, it, it, it didn't help. Once I once I found help by putting them away, things just became clearer. The fog lifted, and and it, and it, it, and decisions were easier and just clearer. I think, mm. and it was easier not to make bad decisions. And, you know, because I was present. That's the thing, and I think, right. and I think that's the big difference for a lot of my life. I think for the majority of it, I wasn't present. Mm. I wasn't living in the moment. Um, I wasn't looking after myself. I wasn't being honest. And since I've stopped drinking, um, thankfully I am present. I am in the moment and I do take one day at a time and I do. Yeah. And, and, and I'm clear in, in my mind, I think. Yeah. If that, if that makes any sense at all. I feel like I'm just makes rambling, sense. rambling, rambling, but like, cause and it's I, all a big, it's all a big sort of, it's all a big sort of story and it's all a big, um, you know, it's a massive big part of my life now because I love, I love the fact that I, I am sober. I love mm. being aware of my own mental health now. I love helping people with it. I love, I love, you know, offering, you know, my story to people if 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 it, if it helps because it was it, it's just because I know so many people who probably are going through or feeling the same sort of thing, mm. and I think it's. I get it completely. You can get completely lost in it mm. and it can, it can bite you in the ass before you know it. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm hugely grateful for you coming on today. I mean, I'm not going to give your address away. But <laughs> Kai has done a bit of a traveling act to come and, to come and uh, be here today and share so generously with you. I just wanted to go back to something you spoke about earlier, this kind of um, uh, sort of alpha male drinking yeah. culture. Yeah. That I think a lot of people listening to this will, will really relate to. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of work in private rehabs and I remember doing a one-on-one -on -one with someone just recently and they said, well, I can't stop drinking because it's in my DNA. Yeah. You know, and I think someone like that listening to this or watching this is going to think, well, it's impossible. How am I going to stay away yeah. from the pubs yeah. and that culture that you described so well earlier? How did you break that cycle? Because, and, and, and actually I'm, I'm, I was a classic binge drinker. I, I, I still am, you know, it's still in me. There's no doubt about it. Um, a proper lad, a proper boy, you know, a, you know, a proper sort of, I, I don't want to put that, you know, I, I don't want to sort of put a term to it, but I was, I was out on every weekend oh, on the piss, watching the sport, drinking the Stella. I, it was that stereotypical sort of alpha. I was that, but it, but it just never, it never, it, it didn't suit me. It didn't fit well with my state of mind. And, 
I love going to the sport. I, I used to love going to a pub mm. and watching the footy and watching the rugby and going to Cardiff on international weekends and having 15 pints of Guinness and singing Welsh rugby songs and making it at myself. And, you know, the years before I was married, you know, going out and, and having a great time and sort of, you know, and meeting girls, all that. So it was, it was, it was a huge, I was a prop, I, I, I loved that part, but it, but, it, the way I feel now doesn't even come close to sort of that. I would much rather feel the way I feel now than mm. that. I don't miss, I still go to the sport. I still go, I still go and have a sing song with my mates. Yeah. I I will still go to Cardiff for international weekends. Um, I will talk to girls. I will be present. But, and I think that's the last thing. I am present for it all. I remember it all. Mm. I wake up clear and fresh and they are beautiful memories rather than memories filled with sort of mm. fear and regret Absolutely. kind of thing. And I think that's, and and I, even whilst I was drinking, I knew from a very early age that I, that there was a day that I wanted to stop that, 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 that one day I wanted to stop drinking because I knew it wasn't very good for me. Right early on, probably mm. from when I was about 19, 20, mm. I knew, God, one day I've got to be teetotal. Wow. I never thought once that I'd, I'd, I'd have to seek help for it or anything like that. But I remember thinking, God, one day I hope I'm teetotal. Because there were times when I would be not drinking, maybe for like two weeks, for example. And towards the end of that two weeks, so like on day 10, when I hadn't had a drink, I felt the way that I always wanted to feel. Like the alcohol had got out of me and I, and I was like, oh my God, I feel strong. Mm. I feel I felt like I failed today, basically. yeah. yeah. So I went, oh, I love this feeling. This is what it's like. This is nice. This is a nice feeling. This is what this is this is what it's like when you don't drink and start looking after yourself. And it sounds like you were getting things that you actually wanted the alcohol to give you, but you were getting it naturally. A hundred naturally, yeah. But then literally four days later, I could never get past 14 days, mate. Right. Could never go past that, day that 14. Mm. Yeah. Could never go past 14. And then and then literally would be back on it again. So it was that thing of like going, I I, I used to love going out, loved it and and, and and there are days when I do, I, brutally honest, there are days when I do miss that and do miss, especially with the football after a Sunday afternoon, you know, there's no doubt about it. Because I had some brilliant afternoons in the pub watching footy and watching rugby. Of course I did. Mm. And it was, it, it, but I, I, the, the, the repercussions are just not even worth it at all yeah. for me. How did you break that 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 cycle then? And obviously, yeah, so, uh, your your yeah. recovery is personal to you. you yeah, only share bits that you want to. But yeah. sort of in basic terms, how did you, if there is such a thing? Yeah, how did you go from someone that associated the pub with drinking, and now you can go in and have a song with your mates and watch the football? Yeah, yeah. How, how did you break that that little chain there? It was this. It was it was. It was because I wanted to, it was, it was because, honestly, it was because I wanted to sort of, oh, the weather's the right, it's because I wanted to live. Mm. Mm. And because I wanted to live for my family and my son, mm. I wanted to be the best version of myself I could be for him and for myself. So I think that's the main sort of yeah. hook. It, yeah. But also, I soon realized that I had to stop, otherwise I wasn't going to live. Or I was going to live. I was going to lose everything. It got to that stage, and you know, it was. It slapped me in the face. Mm. And then by reaching out to help these, this, by reaching out and texting a friend who was, you know, who who'd gone through something a very similar sort of story, his own stock story, um, I was shown a way that has been the best thing I've ever done in my life, other than the birth of my son. Mm. I and I think, and it's because I asked for help. I, I, f I wanted to, I wanted to was the big thing as well. Mm. I had a desire to, and I wanted to, and I think that was a huge thing. So I, so I, I, I fully committed wholeheartedly to, to, uh, a program and, uh, um, a, 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 you know, a, a fierce moral inventory of my, of my past and my misgivings and everything. And this, this program just suited my head because all of a sudden I felt, oh my God, my anxiety is lifting. I, you know, after a good few months, going, oh my God, my, my anxiety is lifting. 
I feel fresher. I'm waking up early. The days seem longer. Mm. I'm present. I'm talking. I'm being honest. Mm. I've, I've got a few extra quid in my pocket. All of these things and nothing, nothing major happened. It was just a shift and it was a change of path. That's all it was. It was a path of honesty as opposed to a path of running away. Mm. Mm. Uh, and, and you start to get real evidence that this, yeah. uh, this sober journey is really and, worth and, it. and actually, it was literally going, oh my God, I would, I would be like this today. Oh my God, I would wake up like this, feeling this usually. Oh, I wouldn't. I, I can pay this bill this month. I couldn't, you know. Mm. And everything just started, like, you could see the pros and cons just opening up before your eyes going, this is a no-brainer mm. for somebody like me yeah. who's going through this. Um, and for long may it continue, you know, mm. you know because it's, it, 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 it's the best thing I've ever done. And I think... For the benefit of myself, absolutely. But again, for the benefit of others that surround me and extremely close to me, mm. it's for them as well. You know what I mean? They're hopefully getting the best version of me. This is a really interesting point as well, because, you know, a lot of the work I do around addiction and mental health and stuff like that, um, you know, the catchphrase is, you know, you've got to make sure you do it for yourself. It's got to be for yourself. And, yeah. and of course, that's true. The impetus yeah. has come for you. But also to have that awareness that it, of course, it benefits everybody yeah. else around you. Yeah. And you kept coming back to this word present. Well, you know, you, yeah. you've said it a lot of times, uh, yeah. you know, during this podcast. And, um, you know, I think particularly children, and I'm sure this applies to lots of loved ones, but I think particularly children, they know when their parents aren't present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about to, it. To, to have that presence back with your son, I know your son's hugely, well, massively all important to you. Yeah. That must be a huge benefit. I think that's the main, that's yeah. the main, my main goal, my main sort of life force. Um, it's, yeah, there's no doubt about it. They, mm -hmm. You know, uh, it was, it, for the first sort of, you know, few years of his life, there's, there's, there's no way I was present. You know, there, there wasn't, there was, my mind was elsewhere. It was, it was, it was a, it was a very selfish behavior. Um, and it, and now it's, it's the complete, op you know, now it's the complete, so that, that's it. That's the complete opposite. It's like, oh my God, it's just, it's a, it's a new life. It's a whole new sort of path. It's, it's, it's just, it's just, and, and just my relationship with other people. Um, and, and, you know, yeah. And, and it is, of course I've got to do it for myself because I want to look after myself, but, I would go away and on, on family weekends and I'd, I'd ruin the weekends because I was pissed. Right, right. You know, I would ruin, I've ruined a couple of holidays because I was smashed all weekend, mm. you know, and, and, and having family members come to me, you know, don't you, please don't get as pissed as you were yesterday because you've ruined our day. Right. And then I'd suddenly, you know, okay, I, that, that then would make me upset because, right. the, the, I, oh my God, I've ruined the day yesterday. What? I'm a nightmare. I'm a fucking nightmare. Pass me the strongbow. Do you know what I mean? Right. So that, so it'd be. Oh my! So that that's the vicious circle that you're that's in. That's the vicious circle. Yeah. I've upset somebody. I've upset them really bad. Oh my god! Because because I was an absolute twat yesterday. Oh my god! I feel awful. I feel like I walk around in circles, going, "Oh my god! I feel awful." Churned up inside. I know what make me feel better. Four yeah. cans later, I can take on the world again. And that's such an important part <laughs> of that cog of that hamster wheel, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because yeah, often yeah. people that don't understand how alcoholism works they just sort of assumed it's you know having a drink after drink after drink yeah. the, the cog of yeah beating yourself up on how how you've behaved it, it, therefore that, then yeah. i'll have another one yeah is a huge component yeah. isn't it that's that that that, that no. was my sort of that was it, it if anything i hated the taste of alcohol mm. if anything you know i i I'm, i've tried a couple of these non-alcoholic ones if you said you've had a sip let's, let's try that the because there's loads around i'm going i don't like the taste of it i just don't like the taste i never mm. i never liked the taste of of alcohol i think i drunk to medicate mm, right if i'm being honest yeah yeah I might have a, I might have had a cold lag and all oh, thirst quencher and all that but mo for the latter stages of my drinking it was medication. It was to calm the things that were going on. It in was your head. to calm the rage and to calm the the burn, the the, the anxiety. Mm. If I'm really being honest and thinking about it, yeah, I yeah. think it was. Especially those sort of things, you know. Yeah. It'd be like I need to ask my medication just to mm. get through the day. Yeah. To cope with seeing people and everything. So it was it was like a it was like a medication. And obviously, doing the work that we do, it's you know, it's quite anxiety filled, isn't it? And there can be a lot of worry. And uh, I know um, the worst thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just want to talk to you about that guy briefly, if that's okay. Just wanted to ask you about, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I think you left drama school about twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. And I've had a good look at your CV. I mean, it looks pretty much that you've been working the whole time. 
time. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure like all actors, there's been gaps, but maybe for an actor that's listening to this, that has had maybe more gaps than you yeah, have. Yeah. And maybe is even thinking about quitting. Or, yeah. Um, what advice would you have for them? Um, particularly if they're feeling really anxious about that. Yeah. And feeling a bit vulnerable about it. I think, I think the, the, um, if, if you want, if, if this is, if you want to do something really badly and you want to, to work in this industry, then you should never give up. Mm-hmm. You don't, don't give up mm-hmm. because, because it will happen and, 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 and just have that utter belief and believe that it will. If you are in a situation where you can um, uh, look after your mental health and your well-being, and you're lucky enough to maybe afford to go to a gym and 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 you know and live well, that all helps massively mm. by being clear of mind and being being solid and, and and just being you know being present is a huge thing because it will it will it will it will just help anything you can do to sort of um, give your body good endorphins and good thoughts, whether it be meditation or, or, or talking therapy or, or whatever it may be a good 5k run or a walk or whatever it may be. Those are the things that will help you mm. during the sort of that times when you're, when you're not worried, like you start your day, right. Mm. You know, Oh, the anxiety of like, Oh, I'm got a job. Where am I going to pay this from? What am I going to do this from? If you can wake up and just decide, I'm just going to, I'm going to make a choice today to just to maybe start my day on the right foot by doing something productive, by going out for a bit of fresh air, by walking, all these things help. Mm. And I think, you know, it's, it's, I think it's that, I think you've got to try and keep yourself as, as on track as you can. And it's Mm. hard. It is hard because there's, the, the the news is relentless. Social media is is, is negative and, and and sort of anxiety inducing, and there's so much of it. Mm. We have to be so strong to sort of like shield ourselves from that and have this thick skin. Yeah. You know, it's really it's hard for anybody in this industry. My my main advice is never get don't give in. Keep believing in yourself, and and if you can try and start each day on the right foot by mm. some sort of movement exercise or thing. Cause it just, because not, like I said, now I still suffer from anxiety. I am, I'm sober, but I suffer from anxiety probably just as much as I would have done before, but mm. I don't medicate anymore. Yeah. I don't medicate with alcohol anymore. Yeah. I am still worried. I'm like I said, I'm crap with money. So I'm always worried about the next month, things like that. So that anxiety never goes away. But what I will do is, is I will write it down. I will then look after myself. I will train. I will walk. I will run. I will face things with a clear head. And you're incredibly adaptable as well, aren't you? Because we follow each other on social media. Yeah. And I know that when the lockdown happened, I think you started a, or you probably still have it running, a yeah. personal training fitness yeah. company. Yeah, I am. Um... So which shows your entrepreneurial... Yeah. Have, you, have you got that mindset around performing in terms of, you know, not keeping all your eggs in one basket, having other avenues? I think I never used to be. I never mm. used to be at all right. because I because I didn't have, I was too focused on sort of drinking and just on that sort of path. But, but since actually, since, you know, over the past few years, I have ventured into, yeah, I'm, I'm a fully qualified personal trainer now. And um, I, I, I've opened myself up to that. There's a little side hustle mm. that's going on with there, which I definitely wouldn't have done years ago. And also I, I teach now at a drama school um, and I wouldn't have done that before, you know, when I was, when, when I, 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 because I have the energy and I, and the want and the desire to do that now. While before I would, I would never have done that years ago mm. at all. I, I, I sometimes think going, I'd never have worked here six years ago, ever. Mm. I would never have qualified as a personal trainer if I was still drinking, right. you know, mm. it, it just helps. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that to anybody in the industry who you need to stop drinking to be successful. That's not the case kind of thing. I think mm. if you have, if you, if you feel that there's issues with, with, with drinking that, that are, wonderful places for you to get help is you know mm. of course there is and you know and, and it'll be the best thing you've ever done but for me it's 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 the it's the mindset and for me it's healthy body healthy mind if you look after mm. if you if you fuel yourself with the right thing and the right sort of nourishment you give your body with the right nourishment put the right things inside your body fuel it exercise it will then feed your mental health which allows you to see life in a more positive way mm. in a clearer way 
and you'll make better decisions. You're, there are so many neurons in our stomachs, mm. nerve endings, which affect our brain. Second brain. That if we, can, if we can start feeding that with goodness, with endorphins and exercise and getting the blood pumping, your brain and your body will slowly but surely thank you mm. and you'll be able to face the day just a little bit better. Yeah, thank you, Kai, for that. And I think I think central to what you're saying really as well is 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 to reach out. So if someone is you know struggling with their anxiety yeah. and maybe particularly alcohol um yeah honesty is another word that you keep coming back to just oh. just reach out to friends or yeah it's what? it's it's the best thing i've ever done mm. i mean i would i would hide i would like i said very very early on i would i would not reach out i would not i would not uh, I, I would just hide it all and and not address it and if i was if i had anxiety or i was feeling low I would take myself off and, you know, and have a pint or something, you know, with that. But it would be now for me, there's no question about it. If you, if you feel that there's a, a slippery slope ahead or you're having, you're having trouble with alcohol or any form of addiction or, or any anxiety, any mental health, there are no more taboos now. There are no, there are no more, you know, we should be talking about this all the time. Yeah. Um, at any addiction, any mental health, any anxieties, Whoever, whoever you are, any any gender, whatever we are, you know, it's this is a huge part of our life now. Mm. Where finally, it's taboos are being broken down about yeah. everything, and we can talk about everything. And there's help there for everybody going through every struggle known, known you know. So, I urge people to 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 reach out and get help because I'm telling you now, and this is just not even, you know, no fluff. Me on that 21st of August in 2017, sending a text and reaching out to help is the best thing I've ever done in my life. Mm. Getting sober and asking for help, still asking for help. I get help daily. Of course I do. Um, is the best thing. I cannot, it's, it's just the best thing. Mm. And, and it's the choice between, you know, not being as dramatic, but it, but it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's the choice between living and dying. Mm. It's that sort of like living life or sort of having life cripple you kind of thing and and by reaching out you can let you can you can release that grip it has on you and feel a little bit freer by just reaching out and and taking it one day at a time growing and living <laughs> and i think i think that passion and that life has really really come across uh, in the last hour it's, it's absolutely fantastic and you know and talking about breaking that stigma down yeah you know having you down today is really going to massively help with that Cheers, man. it's a lot you know it's, it's a, there's so much you know, in my head and round it so I've probably garbled a bit but like it's just it's you know it, it's, it's been brilliant garbling and I, and I wouldn't even call it garbling but you know I, I think a lot of people you know inside the industry outside the industry you know w you know would look at your career and 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 look at who you are and just see someone who's just so strong and you know and uh, just have this amazing career and 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 to come on and and, and share the struggles will just really help break down that stigma yeah good. And, and make good. someone and absolutely make... that that's 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 the if, if it helps one person then Amazing. It's been it's been it's been worth a journey to see you anyway, mate. But oh, if it helps if it helps one person, then absolutely amazing. I can't thank you. I'm so gutted that we're out of time. Ah got it goes quick, uh, didn't it? And uh, you know, Kai must really love me because he sat opposite an Arsenal fan for the last hour, uh, being a an ardent uh, Man United fan in front of me, although yeah. my wife's Man United, so yeah, I'm yeah, used yeah. to that. But uh, That's anxiety using on its own, really, I think. So. <laughs> yeah, that's another, <laughs> that's another that's story. Another thing. Um <laughs> Kai, thanks again, mate. My pleasure, mate. My pleasure. Thanks for asking me. It's been it's been a brilliant hour. It's a great platform that you're doing, mate. And um, I urge people to listen because uh, I know that you've got some amazing, inspiring people coming up. So uh, do listen because um, it's a great platform, man. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kai. And uh, in the show notes, I'll be putting lots of links of things that we've talked about today, places that you can you know follow Kai on social media, etc. Um, but we are out of time. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And as always, there will be another show in two weeks time. It will be dropping every other Tuesday. So please tune in in two weeks time. Follow, subscribe, like, comment, share, all of that stuff. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks again, Kai.